The Centre for Health Economics at the University of York has been performing data analysis to support South Somerset's Symphony Project. The Symphony Project is designed to improve the integration of health and social care for the population of South Somerset, some 115,000 people. The project has created a database that links together previously separate data sets about primary care, community care, acute care, mental health care, social care and continuing care. The linked data provide information about each person's use of health and social care for a full year. Costs for each type of care have also been calculated so that annual health and social care costs can be constructed for each individual in the population. As well as demographic characteristics, the data also contain information about the chronic conditions that each person has. This makes it possible to construct morbidity profiles for each member of the population. Our analysis shows that if someone has a chronic condition, they usually have more than one. Multimorbidity is the norm, not the exception. Let's take diabetes for example. 5,625 people in South Somerset have been diagnosed with diabetes, some 5% of the population. But of these, only 14% have diabetes alone. 27% of those with diabetes have one other comorbidity and 24% have two other comorbidities. 35% of those with diabetes have three or more comorbidities. The data allow us to explore the relationship between multimorbidity and costs. The annual health and social care costs for the 779 people with diabetes and no other comorbidities amounts to around £1,000 on average but 1,535 people have diabetes and one other chronic condition. On average, their annual costs amount to £1,300. Costs amount to £2,400 for those with diabetes and two other chronic conditions. And average costs amount to almost £4,000 for those with diabetes and three other chronic conditions. As the graph shows, costs increase the more chronic conditions that people with diabetes have. The data allow us to explore the cost implications of diabetes combined with particular comorbidities. Let's return to the 1,535 people with diabetes and one other condition. We can depict each of the most common of these conditions using a spider diagram with each ray indicating a particular condition. For example, 845 people have diabetes and hypertension, 83 people have diabetes and asthma. As we've seen, the average cost for people with diabetes and one other chronic condition amounts to £1,300. We can depict this average as a red circle on the spider diagram. Costs are lower than this average for people with diabetes and hypertension at £1,000 and slightly lower for people with diabetes and asthma at £1,200. But unsurprisingly, costs are higher for the 51 people with diabetes and cancer, amounting to £3,500 annually. By plotting costs for all combinations, we can see how costs of particular combinations vary from the average. We can, of course, see some variation from the average, particularly because of the costs associated with treating cancer. But the blue and the red lines correspond quite closely to one another. If we look at the data in the same way for people with diabetes and progressively more comorbidities, the correspondence between the blue and the red lines becomes even closer. And indeed, we can see similar patterns for people who don't have diabetes but have combinations of other chronic conditions such as coronary artery disease, cancer, stroke or dementia. This suggests that the number of conditions that a person has is almost as good as explaining costs as markers for the specific conditions that each person has. This means that we can use the number rather than the type of chronic condition as predictors of future costs. 
This makes it simpler to calculate integrated health and social care budgets, which are being developed to support improvements in the integration of care for the South Somerset population.